welcome to Delightful, Delicious, Delovely. Today I am going to be making vegan potato gnocchi. Um, I've made them in the past with egg and uh, they're not, these without the egg are lighter and fluffier than any other I've ever made. Oh no, I fucking forgot my masher, hold on. Masher. Okay, you can do this with a potato masher or you can do it with a potato ricer. I have a ricer in here somewhere. I don't feel like tearing my kitchen apart trying to find it. And uh, not everybody has a ricer and pretty much everybody has one of these. So what I did, was I, what I have in this bowl is three pounds of russet potatoes that I baked at 400 for about an hour and 15 minutes until they were soft inside. I split them and let them cool off in the sink for a little bit and then I scooped out the potato part, the white part of the skin into this bowl. These, by the way, taste really good with some vegan butter in them. Crunchy little potato skins. If you want to eat them, you can. To this, I'm going to mash this stuff. It's not a science. It's not difficult to do. To this, I'm going to add about a tablespoon of olive oil. I'll drizzle that in there. These are an herbed gnocchi. You don't, I don't have to add the parsley that I'm about to add if you don't want to. This is about a cup of chopped parsley. And I'm going to add a pinch of salt and pepper. Some salt and you know, pepper. All right, I'm going to mash this together until it's incorporated. And then I'm going to add, I'm going to inc incrementally add flour to this. Potatoes vary in their moisture levels, so the amount of flour you add is sort of, you have to just get in there and do it and see how much you need with the potatoes that you have. Okay, so now I'm going to add to this, I'm going to add a little flour before I turn this out on the counter. So again, I baked three pounds of russet potatoes. You want a, a starchy potato. Not all potatoes have the same starch level either. Their moisture levels and starch levels vary. So I recommend the russets for their starch content. Okay, now I'm going to sprinkle a little flour in there. This is a cup and a half. I hope I don't have to go over a cup and a half of flour to get this together. Okay. I'm just going to turn this out onto the counter. Do, 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 do. Put some flour on the counter. Scoop this out onto it. I love gnocchi, um, they're, especially when they, they're successful and they're light and fluffy. I, I'll even eat them when they're chewy and dense, I don't care. But light and fluffy is obviously better. Okay, I'm going to make a dough out of this. Pastry scrapers are helpful. This is actually, I think, some kind of a pizza paddle or something. Could, could not find my pastry scraper either. But basically you want to add just enough flour so that this becomes a dough and not doesn't feel like mashed potatoes anymore. Now don't worry if you make too much of these. These freeze really well too. What you do to freeze them once you've made them is you get out a cookie sheet like this and put some parchment paper on top of it and then you put your little cut up made gnocchi on there and lay them flat in the freezer on the parchment paper until they're frozen solid. Once they're frozen solid, you can put them and transfer them into a Ziploc baggie. And they will keep for a long time in the freezer that way. When you decide to cook them though, don't let them defrost first. You just cook them from frozen. You put them in boiling water and cook them from the frozen state because otherwise they will get very mushy and stick, stick together and be an unsuccessful endeavor for you. And it needs more flour still. Hmm, I might need more flour than I've got here. All right. All right, I'm gonna complete kneading this. 
and then I will come back to you in just a second. It shouldn't take too long. Just needs a, I think I need to get a little bit more flour perhaps. That was a cup and a half I've used so far, of just regular white, all-purpose, organic flour. It's getting there. Just need a tiny bit more flour, I think. All right. All right, I'm gonna wash my hands and I'll be back. Okay, now I'm back. I have my little ball of gnocchi, um, gnocchi dough. I'm gonna get a little more powder. I'm gonna cut this into four. I think four, we'll see how this works out. Little balls, maybe more. Maybe I'll start with a one, what is that? One, two, three, four, an eighth of that roll. I'm going to roll it in flour into a long snake. Like a so. This is about a little less than an inch thick. All right. Now I'm just gonna cut it, cut them about an inch long. About an inch. Not difficult to do. And that, you could stop there. That could be your gnocchi, just like that. If you want to get very fancy, you can either roll it, oh I lost my fork, here's my fork, yuck. You can either roll them on the tines of a fork, like so, oops, and you get a little forked, let me see, I'll roll a couple, show them to you. The purpose of that is to help them hold sauce, or if you have, if you're really fancy, uh, and Lord knows I'm fancy. They make little gnocchi boards. It's a little wooden thing. It's got grooves on the, on the front of it, one side of it. It's closer together than the fork tines are. This I think I paid five dollars for on on a, what do you call it, Amazon. I'll try to show you what these look like. Actually the, the fork marks are deeper too, a little more evident. And that's that's really it. So like I said, I'm gonna do that I'm gonna just finish this all the rest of the dough like I just did here. My stove is being really loud. What the hell was that? Anyway, I'm gonna do this with the rest of these gnocchi with all that dough. Just do this. And that's it. That's how easy that was. It was not complicated at all. I'm gonna let these rest probably for an hour before I cook them. To cook them, you get some salted water to a rolling boil really get it boiling good. And you drop them all in, hopefully as, as close to, in, as easy for me to say, in as close to all at one time as you can do. And they are done when they float to the top. You just scoop them out when, when they float to the top, scoop them out as they float up, and that's done. You just serve them with your sauce of choice. I have a heirloom tomato sauce um, on this channel that is wonderful and goes really well with these. I'll post some other uh, sauces below too. I did, made some I think my pumpkin or sweet potato gnocchi in the past on my blog. I don't know that they're vegan, um, but they had a couple of different sauces, a pesto sauce, uh, pumpkin sauce, all kinds of sauces. You could use any kind of a sauce you wanted on this. Butter, or some vegan butter with some fried sage in it. Um, yeah, and that is it. That is my recipe for vegan potato gnocchi. Hope you liked it. Hope you'll try it. Hope you believe me that it was easy because I didn't pull any tricks uh, on you <laughs> when I went away for a second. So. Um, again, please subscribe. This is my Instagram and my Twitter handles. Uh, please share my recipes, hopefully with your friends, with your non-vegan friends and show them how wonderful vegan food can be and keep them from being uh, so afraid of it because ain't nothing to be scared of. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Uh, the more you subscribe, the more I feel encouraged. And I've been doing this for a year now and I've got over 100 recipes on the channel. And uh, again, I've said it before, I'll say it again. I kind of sometimes feel like I'm sending messages out, me sending messages out in a bottle. And uh, 
Yeah, uh, it's it's nice. It's gratifying to hear back feedback. And if you ever make a recipe and you post it, please tag me up on Instagram or uh, Facebook or whatever uh, or here. Uh, tag me so I can see what you did and how it came out. Let me know. Give me some feedback. And that is it. Until next time. Thanks. Yeah. Bye. I'm half fed down here. I'm half fed down here on old Parchment's farm. Baby, please don't go. Thank you.